So yesterday we focused on cow's milk of the fresh raw variety. Today we are going to be doing another cow's milk soap, I know, it's crazy, of the uh, not uh, fresh raw variety. We're going to be using pasteurized vitamin D whole milk and we are going to see what the difference is as far as this whole soapy journey is concerned. And I will tell you more about all of the things we're going to do today in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you're here for another round of milk fun soapy things, where Mrs. Soap and Clay makes animal m soaps. Milk, milk animal soaps. It's weird. I'm feeling completely discombobulated because this is not something I normally do. But yesterday's soap was so delightful. I loved the hand feel of it. I loved the overall performance of the bar. Very, very hard, beautiful bars right away. Very interesting. I do want to talk more about the hardness of milk soaps. I think I might save that for tomorrow's video, but for this one, just to continue on with the test, is there a difference? Should I be using raw milk or pasteurized milk in my soap? We're going to talk about that. And so we will be doing the same thing that we did yesterday using two different lye solutions. So half of the batter is going to get the lye solution, 100% water replacement with the milk in cube form and the other half of the batch is going to get the lye solution 100% of the water replacement in room temperature liquid form and we're going to see the differences in all of the colors again it's very gorgeous it's like different types of butters and creams really really pretty but we're going to see if it actually ultimately matters in the end result right after saponification is complete and we cut it do we see a difference in color do we see a difference in texture do we see a difference in the actual performance of the bar and is there a difference in the vitamin D bar in the pasteurized to the raw? These are all the things that we're going to test today. So let's get to it and we can do hopefully all of that. So in today's video, as I said, we are going to be using vitamin D milk. And so we are going to talk about the differences between pasteurized milk and raw milk throughout all of this using the exact same process that we used with the first milk soap. And so everything is going to be a sa the same across the board. We're going to do half of the lye solution in frozen form, half of the lye solution in the room temperature form, and it will be 2.4 times the water to lye, the cow's milk to lye. And uh, we will be using, this is a 3% super fat, the oils within this are 30% coconut oil, 30% olive, 20% palm, 10% Shea, question mark, and 10% avocado. 30, 60, 70, 80, now, yep, that's it. That's my thing. And so what are we going to look for? Now, what I guess what we're going to look for really is dependent on what the differences even are between raw milk, you know, cow's milk, and pasteurized milk. Because there are a lot of people out there that really have big opinions on the differences between the two. You know what I mean? Some people are just... They, they they love their raw milk, their, their fresh cow's milk. And others are like, actually, no, pasteurization is good for you because, you know, you're not going to get sick. And I think that's the accurate and based place to be, you know, honestly, because it doesn't benefit you to be coming in contact with such harmful bacteria that can exist within your raw cow's milk. So we're going to talk about the differences and ultimately what pasteurization does and as I have said, I don't know when, but I was talking about this like Twitter feud that's going on. This person who, you know, has all the degrees and all the whatever, just effectively, I don't know, came after raw cow's milk drinkers and said pasteurized is best actually. And so there was a big like Twitter spat going on between 
her and all of the raw milk lovers of the world. And, you know, I don't care. If you want to drink it, drink it. But for me, I am going to go with the, the pasteurized version for sure. I don't, you know, like live on a cattle ranch anymore. You know what I mean? I have, uh, I don't have access to like cows. So I have, you know, regular milk. I want to make sure that by the time it gets to me, it's not going to harm my family. That said, we don't actually drink a whole lot of cow's milk around here. We tend to do more of the almond and the oak. I know you're very fascinated with figuring, with knowing the types of milks that the soap and clay family drinks. Just so you know, uh, Scout's favorite kind is almond milk, but the unsweetened variety. Awen's favorite kind is almond milk, but the vanilla s sweetened variety. And uh, Mr. Soap and Clay's favorite kind of milk is the oat milk or the whole milk he will not touch skim milk at all period won't won't do it so there you go now you know something fun about us and look at the difference in all the colors isn't it beautiful i love it i'm not mad at it let's go pour this and talk about pasteurized milk okay and on to the pour and again we're doing the exact same thing we were doing before we're soaping hot we're soaping fast it's all a moment. So what is found within pasteurized cow's milk versus your um, your raw cow's milk? Well, the water contents basically the well, is the same. It's around 85%. Lactose is also the same, around 5%. The fats around the same, around 3.4, 3.5%. The proteins, the same. And uh, the cassian and the whey proteins at 3.2%. And your minerals, uh, less than a percent and uh vitamins uh trace amounts there's actually less in the pasteurized milk versus the raw milk because a lot of them particularly vitamins b and c are actually lost during pasteurization and also trace amounts of enzymes and ben beneficial bacteria here's the thing the whole point of pasteurization is to eliminate the bad bacteria right so you don't get sick and to eliminate some of those enzymes that can be bad for your gut and so when I say trace amounts, I mean trace, trace amounts. They're barely there. And so in the regular, you know, raw cow's milk version of all of this, there was very trace amounts of enzymes and bacteria and good bacteria to begin with. So what are we looking at with the pasteurized? Not really a difference because the majority of that is going to be destroyed throughout saponification anyway. So as far as purposes of soaping, is there really a difference in what kind you use? I would say no. So I would say you should definitely use the pasteurized version. And here's why. Because it's cheaper. Do you have any idea how much raw cow's milk costs? It's the craziest thing ever. You leave, I mean, for, for the record, I left like my very small hometown when I was 17 years old, and I have not lived there since. So I've only been in cities for my entire adult life, but I still find it cuckoo bananas. The amount of money that is spent on, you know, the the things that were just like free growing up, like beef and milk. It's crazy. When I went to go buy the milk for this, wow, buddy, I I was shocked. There was definitely some, some shocking of the sticker with that one. And so, uh, yes, as we talked about yesterday, lactose some of that can lose some moisturizing properties because of the heat because of saponification it will undergo saponification though uh the fats same thing it will turn to you know the fatty we like the fatty acids it will saponify proteins same thing they get broken down the amino acids for skin repair and growth and uh the minerals there's exact same thing supports the skin barrier function etc and so forth and the enzymes and bad beneficial bacteria they're gone they're gone they don't exist they barely existed in the raw milk. Okay, now on to the cut. And first up, did you see me put anything in this? Did you? Did I put something in this? Like, like a, like an exfoliant? Did you see that? Did you see that happen? Because I didn't see it happen. I don't remember it happening. I mean, I literally just watched it, but you're going to just, just watch it because I'm also talking while I'm doing it. And so most of the time I'm just making sure that my thing didn't stop recording. But anyway, um, yeah, I did not see it. So what is with all of the, the marks there? And it is a struggle bus to get through this. I kept that all in so you could see what a struggle bus it was. And uh, we can talk about when you should cut a milk soap. 
This did not get sea popped or gelled, just like with yesterday's. It did get cut at uh, the same time, which was like two days after it had been poured. My process for using the column molds, I used PVC pipe. So I poured into the PVC pipe and about 12 to, I don't know, usually about 12 hours after pouring, I go ahead and I pop it in the freezer for a couple hours and that makes it easy to get it out. So you just take it out of the freezer after that and you just slam it down on a chunk of concrete like your, you know, your garage floor or the sidewalk or whatever just to get your frustration out mostly. But also it does kind of jar the, the column, the, the soap loaf loose and then you can get it out. It's a good way to get out your frustrations. I like it. But anyway, it will slide out easier if you uh, freeze it and then the room temperature will do its thing and it will compress and expand all the things. So this was two days afterwards though because I had other things to do. I'm a busy girl and it was difficult to cut. So we will talk about how soon essentially you should be cutting your milk soaps with all of this because it does, they do get harder faster. But what's with the spots? What's with the spots? I didn't put any spot. I didn't put any spots in this. It's not an exfoliant. It, it's not. You're going to see it when we like do the lather test. It's not an exfoliant. It's not scrubby. What are the spots? Yeah, I have questions. So anyway, um, uh, what are the benefits of the pasteurized over the raw? For As far as soap purposes, it's going to be just for, it's cheaper. It's going to be effectively the same thing. Can it still, we talked about lactic acid yesterday and how you leave your soap or your milk out. Will it form lactic acid? as the, you know, the bacteria and everything, it will, but way, way, way less because there's hardly any bacteria left at all after, you know, pasteurization because they go high heat to kill all that stuff. So it's not really a good thing to use if you're looking for lactic acid within your, your soaps. But again, a lot of you really like to use the, you know, the, the, the ice cube method anyway. So I don't know that you're actually leaving that out for, the lactic acid to actually form because it's lactose before then, you know? Now we're gonna we're gonna try this and see. Do you see the marks? Do you see? It is not, it's not, it's not an exfoliant. Is it? Did I put an exfoliant in? It's not exfoliating in my hand at any rate. So yeah, the lather, it's gorgeous. It's like the other one and fundamentally the exact same thing. And so I really do like that quite a lot. It has a beautiful bubble to it. It feels lovely in the hand. This is, again, I'm having a better time with this lather with using the fresh milks than I would normally have using the powdered variety as far as my plant milks go. And so I'm interested in seeing if it's a difference from animal milk to plant milk or a difference between powdered to liquid. You know what I mean? But that is a soap number two for our milk series. So first up, I have no idea where those speckles came from. I need assistance. Help, please. And so as far as the lather goes from this one to yesterday's, yeah, it's very, very similar. It's very similar. Beautiful, really creamy, great hand feel to these. Lovely on sensitive skin areas. This would be an absolute delight to soap with. And again, this recipe is just at a 3% super fat. So imagine how cool this could be if you upped that super fat. How just moisturizing and healing and calming and all the things that we're not supposed to say our soaps do, but they do anyway. You know what I mean? For the end user. I think you should definitely play with this recipe. I think you should definitely play with milk soaps. So far, the animal, the actual cow's milk soaps, they're great for sure. We're not getting into goat's milk with any of this, but I know a lot of people really do goat's milk soaps. And so I would love it. Leave your experience with goat's milk in the comments. Tell me if this stacks up like the videos that I've been doing, to your goat's milk soaps. And if you are a member of Sudzers and you're in the Discord, you can drop pictures of the lather of your goat's milk soaps and we can totally compare and contrast. So I guess my end result at all of this as far as comparing the two different types of cow's milk go, as far as performance, there's not a lot of difference for sure. As far as look and feel of the bar, there's also not a lot of difference. As far as the actives that exist, there's not a lot of difference because pasteurization doesn't kill any of the amazing things that we want, you know, within our bodies. And so I don't think that it's going to be killing anything within this medium as well. And this is just the information that I found on it. I obviously don't know. I'm not a big studier of the difference between pasteurized milk and raw milk or whatever. So maybe we have some, you know, cows milk farmers, rancher people out there that can educate us. That would be great because I always love learning new things. Speaking of new things, we are going to be moving on to another type of milk soap tomorrow. So we will be focusing on our plant-based milks moving forward. And we're going to talk about some more of the minutia 
of milk soaps, right? Including the bar hardness. Why does it get so hard? Why does it cure so fast? All of these questions and more will be answered tomorrow. You know, if you would like to get notified of that, you could uh, like and subscribe and comment and bell and all those things for sure. And then the, the YouTube algorithm will feed that to you so you know when I drop a video. And also it help me out because that's awesome. You know, I like being helped. It's fun to help people. Anyway, um, I'm out of here. Sudzers, you are awesome. You are epic. You are everything in this whole entire world. I mean that. That is a fact. You have a couple more days before this Project Soapway Challenge is due, so I hope this was helpful, but I know that most of you are already, you know, doing the things and submitting. So, yeah, I hope you guys are having an excellent day. All the things. Already said it. Still mean it. Love you. Already said that. Also still mean it. I will see you and the rest of everybody again tomorrow for another round of milk-y soapy fun. Bye.